Hello, my name is Saeed Haydar and I am one of the a SHOs. In this podcast, I'll be talking to you about presenting skills for the clinical cases and OSCEs. The learning objectives for this podcast include the importance and, pre- and principles of presenting, some tools for presenting in the history session compared to presenting for the clinical OSCE. Uh, we'll go through a couple of clinical case examples. I will offer a structured approach in tackling the viva for the OSCE and then I will go through a few closing tips for presenting skills in clinical finals. So why is it so important? Well, it's the language that doctors use on a daily basis to communicate with each other. For example, this can be when a junior is presenting to the consult- on a consultant board round, when you refer to other specialties for a specialist opinion, at handover a structured approach is really useful in the morning and evening handovers when you need to summarize the patient's clinical presentation and management in a few sentences. And finally, it's really helpful for the OSCE examinations itself. You must remember that medical terminology is essential throughout because it is a professional medical conversation. And the purpose of this really is to convey your clinical findings, diagnosis, investigations and management to your seniors so that they have a clear view of the patient's clinical status without having examined the patient themselves. So what's the difference in presenting for a history compared to presenting for a clinical OSCE? Well, your approach is often very similar, but there are subtle differences. I would always suggest starting with a generic opening line, such as the presenting complaint. When you're presenting for a history, give a line for the presenting complaint, a brief background, the chronic diseases, present the salient findings and the important negatives. Conclude with a summary sentence that summarises the patient's main clinical problem, your clinical impression, and then try and give three differentials as well. On the other hand, when you're presenting for a clinical examination or an OSCE, the whole point is to portray the patient's current clinical, current clinical status to your co- colleague. The key is to present in a systematic fashion the order that you examine the patient. The end of the bed assessment is essential, so don't forget it at the beginning. And then you can go on to say, for example, on closer inspection. Similarly, with the history station, present the salient findings and the important negatives. As always, try and offer three differentials, having given a summary sentence. Our first clinical case is the cardiovascular examination. I'll go through an example of how you can present, having examined the patient, with those clinical findings up on the screen. So this is Mr. Smith, a 70-year-old chap who admitted to the acute medical unit with chest pain. On general inspection, he was alert and well at rest, with some marked bruising to the left forearm. There were no clinical clues around the bed suggestive of cardiovascular disease. There were no hand signs of cardiovascular disease, and the pulses were regularly irregular at 70 beats per minute. Blood pressure was elevated at 150 over 95. The JVP was not visible, and the clotted pulse was of normal character and volume. On examination of the face, there was no malar flush, no pallor, and no central cyanosis. On closer inspection of the chest, there were no scars, heaves, or thrills. Both heart sounds were heard, and they corresponded well with the clotted pulse. There were no added sounds. The lung fields were clear, and there was no peripheral edema. So in summary, I've just examined Mr. Smith's cardiovascular examination as he presented with chest pain. Positive findings on the cardiovascular examination include an irregularly irregular pulse, hypertension and left forearm forearm bruising. These clinical findings are consistent with hypertension, atrial fibrillation and bruising suggested suggested of previous warfarin or steroid use. To complete my examination I would like to examine the peripheral pulses, perform fundoscopy, get a full baseline set of observations, a 12 lead ECG and perform urinalysis. So that took about half a minute or so and I've just gone through a simple way of presenting your clinical findings having examined the cardio system. So the viva is often one part of the OSCE where I feel that students struggle with quite a bit. However, it's all about having a structure. You will often be asked to offer differentials, investigations and instigate a basic management. Make sure the answers that you give are relevant to the system that you've examined. and then. I'll also offer a couple of tips in the next couple of slides on how to approach the Viper. 
the Oski Viber Mantra is something that I've drawn up, which has three stems, Diagnosis, Investigations and Management, and it's something to fall back on if you're stuck. If you can't remember any differentials, or you can't think of any, consider a surgical sieve to help you out. Investigations have a structured approach again. Start with the simplest and cheapest and then work up. Bedside tests are often the simplest, such as baseline OBS. Don't forget to look at the drug chart, it's so useful. And there are many other simple tests that can be done, such as 12 EDCG, urinalysis and fundoscopy. Consider your blood tests and break them up into two stems, such as the venous and arterial. If the patient's hemodynamically abnormal, then consider an arterial blood gas. Offer your routine battery of venous blood tests, and then a few specific ones relevant to the examination. For example, the last case, a relevant blood test would be a BNP. Then move on to imaging, such as chest x-ray, with special consideration as to whether this needs to be an erect plane film or not. Above all, you need to be safe when you practice medicine on the shop floor, so at this point you should be thinking of a senior review with the view of discussing more specialist investigations such as a CT, a transthoracic echocardiogram, and geography, and so on. Management. A simple way of approaching management is uh, stating the acute management versus the chronic management. In treating this patient acutely, you can offer a generic opening line again, such as I would first resuscitate this patient according to the ABCDE protocol. Once he is hemodynamically normal, I can move on to more definitive management such as his chronic management. These again can be broken into our three stems such as conservative, medical and surgical. In the conservative stem you can think about educating the patient, addressing his or her risk factors and taking an MDT approach. Medical management is obviously ph pharmacological intervention and surgical um, management obviously includes the proposed procedure, think about or consider his preoperative anaesthetic risk assessment, his fitness for surgery and the relevant comorbidities. Now for a few closing tips from presenting on the whole. The key is to examine the patient and present systematically, so always start with the opening line such as I would complete my examination. In order to complete my examination, I would like to um, do this, 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 this. Having examined the patient, it's always professional to take your stethoscope off and put your hands behind your back. At this point, you should remind yourself of the patient's presenting complaint and give a, an opening line to this effect. Don't forget to mention the end of bed assessment. Always remember this is an eye to eye conversation with your senior. So avoid looking at the patient as it is often very easy to do so. Furthermore, when describing clinical findings, avoid pointing at your own body parts. Uh, this is why having your hands behind the back with your steth off, steth off really does help. Again, the medical terminology demands medi uh, medical conversation demands medical terminology, so avoid using layman's terms. And lastly, if you suddenly re realize that in the middle of your uh, presenting, that you've forgotten something really important, such as, for example, checking the JVP. Ignore it mentally, and then mention it at the end. You still get marks for mentioning it. Always offer a summary line, and then volunteer differentials, and then further management and investigations, rather than waiting for the examiner to ask you for them. This allows you to take full control of the OSCE. Bear in mind that the OSCE Viva Mantra that I've drawn up is just a guide in helping you guys getting through the OSCE and the Viva, but it's not a hard and fast rule. The advantage that it can offer is that it does structure your answers. The examiners also want you to be systematic and structured throughout. The next single case is the respiratory examination. Again, I'll offer an approach in going through this clinical scenario. So thank you for allowing, to me examine, allowing me to examine Mr. Jones, a 70-year-old chap who's presented to the AMU with shortness of breath. On general inspection, he was mildly dyspneic at rest, with no clinical clues around the bed suggestive of respiratory disease. Examination of the hands revealed clubbing. There was no CO2 retention flap. The pulse was 70 and regular, and he was tachypneic of a rate of 24. Blood pressure was 110 over 70. The JVP was not visible, and there was no lymphadenopathy. 
on closer inspection of the face, there was no pallor or central cyanosis. On direct, uh, closer inspection of the chest, there were no scars, but he appears, appeared cachectic. The apex beat was non-displaced. Chest examination revealed a central trachea, reduced expansion to the left with double percussion in the left lower zone with associated reduced tactile vocal resonance. Auscultation of the chest, there was reduced air entry in the left lower zone as well. So in summary, this 70-year-old chap presented to the AMU with shortness of breath as clinical chest findings suggest of a left-sided pleural effusion. This could be secondary to CA lung. To complete my examination, I would like to request a baseline set of observations and obtain a sputum sample for culture. To investigate this chap further, I would like to perform some blood tests including an arterial blood gas for oxygenation levels and then request some routine venous blood samples including a clotting as a chest drain may need to be inserted. Imaging would include a chest x-ray. At this point I would discuss this patient with my senior colleague with the view of getting a more specialist investigation such as a CT and a respiratory opinion. Thinking about management, I would first manage this patient by resusc resuscitating him according to the ABCDE protocol and then move on to more specialist management based on my clinical findings and investigation results. Based on my current clinical findings, I suspect this patient will need a left sided chest strain. The third and final case that I'll be going through is an abdominal station. This is Mr. Wright, a 70-year-old chap who's presented to the AMU with PR bleed. On general inspection, he appeared well on alert at rest. There were no clinical clues around the bed. There were no hand signs suggestive of abdominal disease. His pulse was regular of 70 beats per minute. Blood pressure was 95 over 60. On examination of the face, there was no pallor, no icterus, and the oral mucosa had no ulcers and was normal. There was no neck nymphadenopathy and no Verkhoff's nodes. On close inspection of the abdomen, there are no scars and it was not distended. The patient was tender in the left lower quadrant on light palpation and on deep palpation, a mass was palpable in the left iliac fossa. There was no guarding, no rebound, non peritonitic. No organomegaly and the kidneys were not balotable. I wasn't able to palpate an abdominal aortic aneurysm. On auscultation, there were normal bowel sounds and no renal breweries. So in summary, this 70-year-old gentleman presented with PR bleed, who is hypotensive of 95 over 60, with positive finding was abdominal on his abdominal examination of a tender left lower quadrant with an associated left iliac fossa mass, and his non-peritentic abdomen. He has clinical findings suggestive of diverticular disease, diverticular abscess, and CA colon likely sigmoid. To complete my examination, I would like to get a baseline set of observations, obtain a stool sample for cultures, examine the hernial orifice, and perform PR examination. To investigate this patient, I would like to do both venous and arterial blood, uh, blood samples. Um, I would also consider an erect chest x ray to exclude a perforated viscous. I would then discuss patient with my senior surgical colleagues in the view of obtaining more specialist tests. My management would be first acute and then chronic. Acutely I would manage him according to the ABCDE protocol first. Once he is humanically normal I will consider the long-term management of this patient based on my clinical, fi uh, clinical findings and investigation findings. So a few closing tips. Try to go around in groups of twos, threes and fours with an OSCE book and mark schemes and examine patients on the ward and present to one another. Use a generic structure and apply it to all your cases. Be systematic in your approach. Always bear in mind that the examiners do want to pass you, but you need to demonstrate to them that you are safe to practice medicine. And above all, get slick at this skill. Get really slick at it because not only will, you, will it help you in your clinical finals, but it will get you through many years ahead. So I hope you feel that I've covered all these learning objectives. Really the biggest message of all is to practice, practice, practice and then practice some more. I hope this podcast has been useful. Thank you, thank you for listening to this episode.